Let's get into clusters. And what a cluster is, is basically it's a series of components that you're combining essentially into a new component. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna create a roof through this next section, but we're gonna use the cells over here. And I actually want to actually reuse this kind of bit here where I'm splitting up these two buildings. So if I go back to see our cells, I'm just gonna type in the cell here. Well, I think cells are just lines, so we're gonna grab this and just plug these in. So here are all my cells displayed. So I have the three by 17 long, and I'm actually gonna use these cells to define the roof. So there's gonna be a roof here over this section of columns, and then there's gonna be another roof over here over this section of columns. And I wanna do something similar to what I did here where I'm actually taking away these middle cells. Instead of just kind of simply copying and pasting, what I'm gonna do is actually put these into a cluster. So I'm gonna select both of them. I can do a spacebar. And then just above groups, there's this little file structure. And that's actually gonna merge those two into what's called a cluster. The cluster now sits outside of my group, so I kinda of want that back into my group. So I'm gonna select it, select shift, select my group right click and then say add to group so that's still back into this. I might wanna label my cluster so I can go in and label it whatever it happens to be. So cluster, so remove or create courtyard. Mm, let's keep it pretty short. Remove columns. Ooh, that's super long. There we go. What this allows me to do is now instead of copying those two components over and over again, however many times I want to kind of use it, I actually just need to copy this cluster again. And so I'm going to want to define different values for these two sections. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy both of those. So I'm going to go control C, control V, pull it up to here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my curves that I'm parsing through in my cells, and I'm going to plug it into this L value over here, which is the list that I actually want to call in this particular case. Again, calling is just a fancy word for removing a certain section. So already you can see with my nine by three that I had prior plugged in, it's removing these sections of cells here. Now, because they're cells and cells each have kind of two points on it, it's a slight offset from what you know this is. And so as opposed to starting at nine, I actually need it to start at eight. And as opposed to just three values, I actually need it to be four values. So you know, here I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so should count from zero. I'm trying to remove this section, which was actually the eighth set. And so I wanna change this number to eight, and then that's gonna get rid of that. And I actually want it to be, you know, four cells as opposed to prior where it was the three points. So I'm gonna change the four. One thing this does is that as I change the size of my building per se, if I go back to these values, it's not gonna be as dynamic as it would be if this were tied into this also. And suppose that you know every time I wanna shift where the courtyard is, having to change these numbers and this number. So what I like to do always is tie the things together and then use expression editor to basically deduct you know, one from this value and then add one to this value. So I'm gonna right click on my S, go down to my expression editor, and I'm gonna again use the notation X. Here I wanna go X minus one. So it's gonna take that input value of nine and it's gonna subtract one, which gives me eight, obviously. And then I want three here plus one. And so I'm gonna go to C and right click on it, go to expression editor and say C plus one, or no, not C, X plus one. So you actually, Prior used to be able to put in the kind of letters that were here. Now the expression editor, you always use X for whatever kind of base variable. And so we're gonna plug the three in here. And what's nice now is if I wanna move that courtyard, these cells, which will make up my roof here shortly, will dynamically move with my columns as opposed to being kind of two separate entities. So if I go to, let's say, I want my courtyard to start at 10, I can do that dynamically. It's a little hard to tell the difference, but you can see it changing over here. So let's go back to nine. And there's my two buildings. And I actually want to group this within this also, but here I'm gonna say remove cells as opposed to remove columns. The other thing about clusters is actually they're what's referred to here as entangled. So if I want to make a change to the cluster, every time I copy paste the same cluster, they're actually tied together. So if I make a change to one of these, it's actually gonna change the other one. So to get into a cluster, let me go back and do that again. No. 
All I do is just double click on it and then you can actually see the parts and pieces that went into defining that cluster. So I had the series component, which is then giving me just a list of integers that define my indice. And then I have the actual list of things that are actually being called. And so you can see here, the way it previews is saying that it's looking for an input from this, it's looking for an input from S, and then it's looking for an input from L. So as you go back to this section, you see your L, S, and C, as opposed to seeing these other inputs that aren't being used in this particular case, which are set up as a default. So you can you know, always add those later on if you want to. So, I mean, we can do a control C, control V, and let's say I wanted an in value to be part of my list. If I go save and close, I now have an in value as part of my input over here and one that I have to fill out. Generally within the clusters, I try to eliminate as many inputs as possible and just have the ones that are really truly necessary. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that out, say save and close. And you saw that change prior between both this one and this one. I think one of the things a lot of people end up doing is that as you build up complex systems, you end up copy pasting a lot of these kind of previous bits. And what I always recommend is opposed to just purely copying these previous bits and then pasting and then sometime later on, you have to go in and change one particular item throughout all of your copies. Using these clusters is a great way to not only tighten up your definition because it takes up less space in the canvas, but also as a way, kind of a smart way of copying bits of information.